In June 2020, I decided to travel to Milan, in Italy, immediately after the country had reopened its borders. In this video, I want to show you what travel in Italy is like now and share my top 17 things to do in Milan during the new normal. Incredibly beautiful day today and I can't wait to head out and discover the sights of Milan now. I first stopped by at the tourist office and asked which sites were already open for visitors again. The woman at the tourist information said I was the first foreign tourist that has come to the tourist information since the crisis started. And they also told me that the masks are compulsory even out in the open so you have to wear a mask no matter where you go. This is the ticket office for the Duomo. So usually it would be like thousands of people standing in line here but because of the new normal it's completely empty. The Duomo is the first site on my top 17 list. It's a symbol of Milan and one of the most magnificent cathedrals I've ever seen. Its construction was begun in 1387 and took almost 600 years to complete. The Duomo is most famous for its spectacular exterior of white marble, but the inside is just as beautiful with enormous stained glass windows and precious artwork, from the floor all the way to the ceiling. After visiting the inside of the cathedral, I took the stairs up to the roof terraces. Oh my goodness, I'm literally standing on the roof of the cathedral right now. <laughs> this is crazy! This is the best place to admire the elaborate spires of the cathedral and the forest of flying buttresses. In the center of the roof rises a spire with the golden Madonnina, which used to be the highest point in the city. The roof of the Duomo offers incredible views of the Piazza del Duomo and the city of Milan. After my visit to the Duomo, I decided to take a break at the famous Camparino bar. This bar is a true Milanese institution and has been open since 1867. And its prestigious main drink is the Campari Sense, which is this right here. Campari is a bittersweet cocktail that is produced in Milan and let's try it. Mmm, it's delicious. Really bitter, but absolutely tasty. At the Camparino bar, I tried one of the most famous dishes from Milan. This is the risotto alla milanese, which is basically rice infused with parmesan cheese and saffron. Oh wow, this is so much better than I expected. It's really delicious, kind of like buttery, you can taste the cheese, it's amazing. After lunch, I went for a quick stroll around Galleria Vittorio Emanuele II. This elegant shopping arcade was built in the 19th century and celebrates the unification of Italy. It houses many luxury boutiques like Prada, Versace or Louis Vuitton and connects the Piazza del Duomo to the world-famous opera house La Scala. During normal times it's an extremely bustling shopping street but as you can see behind me, not during those times. It is still magnificent though. What a beautiful building. If you're in Milan, I highly recommend taking these e-scooters because here in Italy they're allowed to go 25 kilometers an hour, which is a really nice speed already. The e-scooter apps I found most helpful in Milan were called Bit and Dot. I'll link them and all the other things that I mentioned in this video in the description below. So now I'm standing in front of the Castello Sforzesco. The Sforzas were the mighty family that ruled Renaissance Milan and this is their castle. It's one of the biggest citadels in Europe. The Castello Sforzesco was built in the 15th century by Francesco Sforza, the Duke of Milan. It was later modernized by Napoleon during the French occupation of Italy. 
Today, the castle shelters seven museums, which showcase fragments of Milan's cultural and civic history. So one interesting fact about this castle is that the defenses were actually built by Leonardo da Vinci himself. And the last statue that Michelangelo ever made is here in this castle too. But unfortunately, because of the new normal, the museum is currently closed. And I finally got my first ice cream in Italy. This is tiramisu pistachio and berries, and it's delicious. Mm. So good. After visiting the Castello Sforzesco, I continue to the Parco Sempione, which is right next to the castle. The Parco Sempione was originally a preferred hunting ground of the Sforza Dukes. During the 19th century, it was converted into a vast public park with winding paths and ornamental ponds. Today, it's the most popular city park of Milan and people of all ages come to this green space to relax. Next, I walked over to the popular bar area around the Arco della Pace. As you can clearly see, the restaurants are open here in Milan, but it's socially distanced eating, so to speak, because the tables are really far apart. But that's really the main difference to what it was like before, I imagine. All right, so this is something very typically Milanese. This is the aperitivo, which means you pay once and you can eat as much as you want. Usually it's a big buffet, but because of the new normal, no more buffets, so you just get the food at the table. And of course, you got the aperol spritz, or spritz aperol, as they say in Italian. Ah, it's delicious. This is probably one of my favorite drinks in the world. Alright, so that place is called Cream Lounge and it was really nice. So if you want to have a nice aperitivo in Milano, definitely check out that place. The most relaxing moment of the day. So good morning, breakfast just arrived and it was brought to my room because breakfast buffets obviously aren't allowed here. Italian breakfast is usually really light, with coffee and something sweet, like pastries or a yogurt. My favorite coffee choice is the cappuccino with delicious frothy milk on top. Let's go discover Milan some more. So I safely made it more or less fast to the Museo del Novecento. This is really important. If you want to visit museums at the moment in Milano, you have to register online first. So I registered yesterday and reserved the spot. Fairly easy, but you need to know that. Register first and you'll get in much faster. So they checked my temperature as usual. I disinfected my hands and now I'm inside the museum. The Museo del Novecento is organized in chronological order and showcases art from the 20th century with a particular focus on Italian and especially Milanese homegrown talent. It's a great place to get a better understanding of Italy's recent history. The views of the Duomo on the third floor are breathtaking. After the museum, I went for a quick lunch break to one of the typically Italian bars close to the Duomo. I get a simple pizza al taglio, which means pizza by the slice, and a certain Mexican beer. Here's something I might important for you to know if you're traveling to Milan. As far as I know, they don't sell tickets for the tramways inside the trams. So you need to buy them at the little stands where they also sell newspapers. So that's how I just got mine. And now I'm gonna take the tramway to go to the Cimiterio Monumentale. I found the tram was a great way to get around Milan. 
you can use it extremely well with Google Maps. Now here in front of the Cimitero Monumentale, the monumental cemetery, and I mean just by looking at it from the outside it truly seems to be huge. So this is a cemetery that was built in the 19th century and is mostly used for the rich and famous of Milan. The cemetery includes a so-called famedio, a hall of fame for some of the city's most honored citizens, including Alessandro Manzoni, one of the most important writers during the Italian unification. Close to the main entrance, there is a steel and marble memorial to Milan's World War II concentration camp dead. Many of the tombs in the cemetery are impressive works of art. So, since we are in a cemetery, I would like to take a brief moment to remember why I'm doing this trip and to remember all the people who died because of this crisis. So yeah, maybe you want to join me for a quick moment to remember all the people who have suffered. Thank you. So we are close to the central station now and that's where we're gonna meet our new Italian friend. I was real debating a bit with myself if I should meet someone here but she said it's okay. So well, I'm gonna trust the locals and uh, yeah, excited to see her. Well, oh, that's a pretty impressive central station I would say. The style looks a bit fascist though. All right, so it worked, and I'm here now with Francesca, da ragazzi. Now we're gonna try to find the Navigli district and go for a drink there, and maybe also some of the other sites on my list. Milan has some very cool street art, and you often stumble upon it when you least expect it. We saw some really interesting pieces when we walked around in the neighborhood around Porta Ticinese. So now we're in front of the Porta Ticinese, which is an old city gate of Milan. But now let's go to Navigli, because that's really what we came here for. It's also Francesca's first time <laughs> I'm here. I'm super excited. She's so, so excited like, all the time like, about all the things. It's freedom after yes. three months. It's great. Molto contenta, molto felice. It's a beautiful, beautiful The Navigli area especially around the Naviglio Grande Canal, is my favorite area for going out in Milan. It has dozens of bars and is perfect for an aperitivo or simply drinks. The setting along the canal is extremely picturesque. All right, so we are now here having aperitivo again and we got some bruschetta, which is Italian bread with different toppings. What kind of bruschetta did you get? And yeah, I got like aubergine with prosciutto crudo, which is Italian ham, it's so delicious. And I'm back. Wow, that was a pretty productive day, like all the sights that we saw today, it's pretty amazing. And of course the aperitivo was really nice, it almost felt like being back and a normal life, but then you get up from the table and everything is different again and you realize that everyone's wearing masks. But yeah, it was a great night in Milan and then tomorrow we'll continue on to Venice. So I'll talk to you again in the morning. So I just checked out and now we're going to Gattullo, which is a truly legendary bakery or pasticceria as they say in Italian. Let's see if it's really as great as everyone says. The Gattullo Bakery and Cafe was opened in 1961 and is still run by the same family. It's famous for its delicious and varied pastries and the perfect spot for breakfast in Milan. 
And this, my friends, is what I call a perfect Italian breakfast. All these delicious treats and a cappuccino with frothy milk and coffee. Oh, it looks so beautiful. <laughs> Mmm, this is mm, this is incredible. My taste buds are having a party right now. Oh wow. This chocolate filled pastry, it's incredibly good. I'm now standing in front of the Basilica di San Lorenzo and as you can easily see by the row of columns in front of it, this is a really old church. It dates back to the 4th century. The Basilica di San Lorenzo is an early Christian church and dates back to the days of the Roman Empire. At its center is a circular structure with three adjoining octagonal chapels. I was very impressed by the quiet energy of this place. So those are my recommendations for Milan. What are yours? If you're from there or if you've been there before, please make sure to leave your tips and advice in the comment box below this video. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to Max Nomad for new travel videos published every day. I'm Max Nomad and I will talk to you again soon.